So my name is Mauricio Mejia. I'm uh, originally uh, from Southern California, raised in Los Angeles. Uh, a lot of people don't know it, but I'm actually born in San Francisco. And uh, I was raised in Los Angeles, so my heart is, uh, is, is all about LA. I'm, I'm really happy to be sharing my story of nightlife and where it all started for me and, and where, where it's at today. I was living in Monrovia, and I was going to Monrovia High at the time. And uh, I remember my mom shaking me in the morning in my bed. She's all, Chele, Chele, wake up. There's a Lamborghini parked outside of your, uh, outside your window. I, I got dressed and I, I think it was my sister or my mom. I, I, woke, I had them come outside with me. And I said, hey, you got to take a picture next me next to the car. So I remember uh, uh, walking back home from school and, and I see the, the hood is popped open. The doors are popped open. This guy, straight like the movies, pops out, tall guy, uh, with these bright green eyes, and uh, and I look at him, and I and he looks at me, and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Nice car. Uh, his name is Martin, Martin Rojas. We call him Martin Green Eyes. Again, I'm excited. I'm a young kid, you know, never seen a Lamborghini in in, in, in person, and uh, me, I'm I got asked the question. I said, so what do you guys do? Uh, Martin says to me, he goes, oh, we're promoters. We're nightclub promoters. We promote some of the hottest clubs in Hollywood. He says, do you want to go to a club with us tonight? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, how am I going to get in? I don't have an ID. He's like, don't worry about it. You're going to go with us. Walk up to the front. Everybody knows uh, these guys are the, are the promoters. So they're the VIP treatment, the open up the velvet ropes, and boom, I walk in. From, from the people that Martin introduced me to and and just the networking as a kid and just kind of falling in love with the glitz and the glamour uh, just opened up a whole different world for me because I remember throwing the little parties at, at, in my junior high and high school and then going to a teen club, but now I was in. I got to grow up with some of the, the, the great promoters that are, that are still around today. I mean, John Pena from Boss Entertainment in LA. Uh, we expanded Boss Entertainment here to the Bay Area uh, when I moved up here in 1994. Miles Kovac, who uh, used to have Tough Guy Records, who now he's the founder and creator of, of uh, Dub Magazine. Pasquale, uh, Pasquale, you know, we all grew up together in the same neighborhood. Pasquale is the uh, founder of Insomniac, uh, EDC. You know, so to grow up with these guys uh, and to be exposed to these promoters, uh, just kind of, it, it, was, it was a great experience. It kind of set the tone for what I did when I moved up here to the Bay Area. I got into the nightlife scene in the Bay Area right away and uh, I started promoting for a nightclub called City Nights in San Francisco. And at that time, uh, I had met uh, who today still is who's one of my best friends uh, and we worked together, uh, David Garcia. Uh, David and I started working on a promotion called Groovy Sundays. Uh, that was actually one of our first promotions in San Jose. Uh, teamed up with a guy out of, out of San Jose by the name of Mondo Millen. There used to be a, a nightclub there called Hamburger Mary's. It was a restaurant. And that was a gay, gay uh, uh, restaurant, gay nightclub. I remember that when we started doing Groovy Sundays, this was the first time that we actually mixed gay and straight kids with drag queens and just kind of, it wasn't about your sexuality or it wasn't about color, it wasn't about race. It was about music. I've always been a believer in this. Music is what brings people together. Uh, 1996 or 97 is when we launched The Groove. The first one that we did, we had a thousand kids. And I couldn't believe how, how crazy this party was. Again, just the edge, the music that we were playing was that LA hard house sound with, with obviously, with house, just, just great music and there just it just blew up there was a party at, in San Jose that people were it was back in the in the early 90s they were doing a Hollywood Junction and um, I remember that at the time the resident DJ was a guy by the name of uh, Greg Lopez who uh, Greg had uh, asked Billy if you know they were interested in doing a party together and uh, he said yeah so what, what Billy had done he had asked uh, David and I we were interested in in partnering up or becoming a part of this team. So that's when we created the Fun House. The Fun House was the first 18 and over uh, Thursday night party. Fun House became so big on a Thursday night that they actually moved us to a Friday night. And from that point on, I just kind of uh, 
I just started to dominate the San Jose market. Uh, I knew what I wanted to do so badly that I did three years of college and on my fourth year I decided that I wanted to drop out of school because I knew that I wanted to be a nightclub owner, I knew that I was an entrepreneur. I remember telling Harry Evans, who to, to this day he's uh, my mentor, he's, he's like a father to me. I remember telling Harry, I said, Harry, I said, uh, I'm only going to be here from, you know, maybe a two to three years max, I said, because I'm going to do bigger things. I basically became his uh, right-hand person, his personal assistant at the Tropicana, and at the time, we had Tropicana, we had Club Miami, we had the old Paradise Beach, which was uh, Vertigo, um, and then we had the Rodeo on Coleman. Uh, 2003. I, uh, the opportunity came about to open up a building that no one thought could ever be turned into a nightclub and that was the vault on, uh, well, at, it's the San Jose uh, Savings uh, and Loan Building in downtown San Jose, right on the heart of uh, downtown on Santa Clara and Market. By dumb luck, I walked in and I met the landlord and uh, literally I, I sat down with him for hours. And and I remember that um, I, I sold him, I, I mean, I, I sold him this vision and literally uh, on a handshake, he said, I'll lease you the building. What I learned being, you know, Harry's assistant, I mean, I learned that you have to take care of your bills, you have to pay your taxes, pay your rent, and make sure you take care of your vendors. Uh, I said, this is something that I really wanted to do. So uh, July of 2004, after, some sweat, tears, and a lot of hard work. Uh, it was the grand opening of the vault. And uh, there was a lot of people that were involved in that, in that process uh, that, you know, without, that, without their help, you know, it would have never had that opportunity. Uh, truly, we can say that the vault, the Ultra Lounge, was the first upscale bottle service nightclub in downtown San Jose. People thought it was a car show, an exotic car show in front of the club because we'd have all the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, the Bentleys, the, I mean, you named it, we had it in the front of the, 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 the club. In uh, 2006, 2007, when the economy started shifting and people weren't spending as much money. And at the time, everyone, the big pool parties in Vegas were the hot things to do. Uh, 2007 is when we, uh, when we started to talk about doing Detox Sundays. And it was funny, on, it was on a napkin over some sushi, how we came up with the name. Uh, there's so many different versions of, of names that we played on and, and just by, by dumb luck, you know, Detox and then what day, Sunday, and we just put the, the two words together and Detox Sundays was created. So yeah, so you know, again, going back to Boston Entertainment, part of our, our, our being on top of things, it was how do we become, how, how do we stay cutting edge? How do we stay on top of our, our promotions? And I remember that uh, when we used to go pass out flyers at other nightclubs, other promoters used to start taking off our flyers. So I wanted to create the world's largest party flyer. We would basically drive this big billboard with a generator and some lights inside and we would drive it next to the competitors. We'd go park it right in front of the competitor's door and when people would come out, they'd see this big billboard, you know, the groove, the body shop, whatever it was, our promotion, the vault. I mean, I, I always wanted to be in your face and I always wanted to be ahead of the curve and I wanted to make a statement to people. For a while, I had a Boss Mobile Advertising and uh, you know, from that, that business, I, I was able to do stuff for Budweiser, uh, for Michelob, uh, for the Raiders, for the Niners, for Cal Berkeley, for Stanford, Metro PCS. I mean, it went from one billboard to six billboards. That's kind of, uh, in a nutshell, you know, uh, where from where I started to where we're at today. And and I'm super excited. In 2018, I'm coming into this 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 with this new energy and this just this new outlook on things. And I really want to take the scene to a whole different level because I I truly believe in my heart right now. Here in the South Bay, it's not being done the way that it should be done. And I think that uh, I'm building a strong team right now of, of, of great personalities and great talent that we're, we're going to do something strong. The vault, we did some big parties, you know, the 911 bank robbery in progress. I mean, we just, we did some really fun stuff, paparazzi, you know, everybody wanted to be on picture, so we put all 
the local, the, the hot local people that used to come to the club all the time. 